This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Plan on paying less for the coverage that you need with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote today at fbhp.com. I'm Amy Wells, and we are in Indianapolis for yet another day of Combine Madness. Rhett Bryan is here, and we are joined by NFL Network's Cynthia Freeland. Cynthia, we are so happy that you are here. We have so many things that we want to talk to you about, and they are mostly numbers related, which great. is not a place where I thrive. Uh, so that's same why I'm here. here. Uh, yeah. You know so. what? That's great. It keeps me employed. <laughs> Thank you. You know, like yeah. I'm, I don't do, I don't do like grammar. I'm a terrible, so I'm like, whom? Yeah. Whom? I don't know the answer to that, if but I do know. If you throw it out sometimes, right. I think you'll land on Perfect. it. Perfect. I think you're good. <laughs> One of the things that we've ha- talked a lot about and have heard a lot about is analytics and numbers as they relate to play calling. Mm-hmm. Talk a ton about that kind of stuff. You mean in the broadcast, we're like, well, the analytics say to go for it. Mm-hmm. That drives me up the wall. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's what they say. It's like the probability of this and this is they should do this thing. And I, I understand. That makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but we are not in that time of year. We are in the building of a roster time of year. Mm-hmm. And so there is a completely different, I would imagine, set of numbers that people are looking at right now to try and decide who to put on their football team. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? Well, there's also, there's kind of three competing things happening at once. The first one was already, that this one's like a finite one, which is the salary cap number. And it's higher than at least anyone I've talked to is expected, right? The 30 million increase. I think people thought it would be more like, 15 to 20 like this is a a significantly higher number than many teams were accounting for so that's good now you have to weigh everything to do with the combine and the draft prospects you have to weigh that with the free agents so the free agency market which obviously happens in two weeks before the draft happens that's kind of the other part of the like the the underbelly of the combine a lot of these meetings that are happening they're not necessarily like hey i've got this like really sick wide receiver from you know washington people know about romo dunze right like (laughs) but it's like no no um you know my we might franchise tag this guy but maybe like that is the other part like the free agent metrics that go into creating your entire roster are on full display this year as with every year So when you're looking at uh, the numbers part of it, the money part of it, how many different aspects are you balancing all at once? Because there's so much more than just we've got to add the new people. There's also existing people who would still like to get paychecks, (laughs) I assume. (laughs) So there's a couple of things. The first is, you know, the good GMs and and their reshuffling and you'll be like, X players number got converted to x sign okay great so do all that little like weird math stuff that is so nuanced to the nfl that it's like you have to be like it's a totally different financial system so get that stuff done to like maximize your cap space then two, figure out like of your potential free agents restricted free agents franchise tech like use your tools available to you to optimize then figure out who's going to be available in the market and really i think what's happening here in indiana is the market's being established for this year I, there's a lot of talk about running backs. Actually, somebody yelled at me about running. It was very <laughs> weird. But like, <laughs> that seems aggressive. Okay. Yeah. It, it, well, and it, the funniest part was I think they confused me for someone else who I look nothing like, and like, <laughs> it, like okay. it was very strange. So, but they were and they're saying like you've devalued running backs to the point. I'm like, first of all, I have not. I have not <laughs> signed a thing. Just so we're clear, I do not sign anyone's contracts. I I am I don't employ <laughs> anyone. So whatever. But long story short, it's like, you know, establishing what the the marketplace is. That's a lot of what's going on here, too. Like Legereus Sneed's market, right? Like this is a guy who just coming off winning a Super Bowl. They'll probably franchise tag him. Um, I don't know if they like whatever. It it, it makes a lot of sense if they're him or Chris Jones. Right. And a lot of other teams are like, well, we could really use Legereus Sneed services. So what's the market going to be? to like for a franchise what's the deal or do you want to do a trade or what Th- they're using that commodity like, like him to try to get either him or more than the value of him through trades or whatever you know so it's a it's a lot of competing math all at once but it's also guessing what your opponent's going to do so that you can out maneuver them because it's a marketplace so cynthia question is it relates to the titans because not only has this cap gone up a historic 30 million bucks, but they are in the rare opportunity and window to kind of reset position values because Ryan Tannehill is currently off the books and so is Derrick Henry. 
and they've got Will Levis, who mm -hmm. is going to be the starter under a rookie contract. So now they've got a chance to move some pieces around, mm -hmm. maybe front load a contract mm -hmm. with a guy or two they want and have that back end of the contract be friendly so that yep. if Will Levis is the guy, yep. you can afford to pay him. So right. they're in that process where they're getting out of salary cap jail pretty much. Yep. The credit card was max. Now it's clear. Here we go. Yes, and this will. it's also a good – you know, it's very nice when you have a new coach to be able to enact your strategy, right? Like it's very hard to figure out what someone else's intentions were two, three years down the road. First, like you walk in and you're like, well, there's, it's, it's not like you create your 53-man roster from scratch every year, right? Like there's some that you're just – they're going to be there and some that aren't, right? So you have to figure out – so it's like is the strategy then to build like from the inside out, meaning like trenches and then – the middle of the defense, like, or is it going to be to like, best available play? Like, what's this? We'll, we'll see, right? And the good part is, is now you have all of these options available to you, which to me means that's great because then ran like they can get on the same page, GM and coach, and they can make one strategy easy peasy. And to your point forward. about the running backs, you're not going to pay twelve million dollars for a running you're not, back. You're not. You're not going to pay thirty-six million dollars this yell year. That for that. <laughs> you, and I didn't yell at you, and I'm not going to. And you're not going to pay thirty-six million dollars for a quarterback like you had for for Ryan Tannehill. Right. So, this is a rare opportunity. It's a great one, and also there are some. It's weird because I, I don't know if these like cap casualties. It's just more like bad contract clearing uppings mm -hmm. from other teams that's really bad english told you i do math not english but but you i know, can understand that <laughs> yeah like like let's so they got them off their books maybe a pass rusher to be developed so you don't necessarily need to go out this year and say we're fixing everything in one fell swoop like leverage the will levis contract leverage the fact that you've got there's a i don't know if the like who sets the running back mark it's going to be very interesting to me like do the raiders keep josh jacobs do the you know what happens with Austin Eckler? Like these are these are some guys who are like Tony Pollard, exactly Saquon Barkley, yeah. That one's even weirder to me. Like <laughs> they're all some some are less weird and so, like some I'm like, well Austin Eckler's been really good, but like this is a new system, so like it's it's I'm not, not personal if they don't choose like choose to keep him. You know like whereas like some just feel personal. You know, yeah. Like, it's, it's whatever. I, I don't know if it is, but it, it just. Feel, I mean, <laughs> Derrick Henry is going to be. I, I'm curious what he'll get. Like, it's very – the market's so weird. The The market is so weird. It's either going to be, like, some someone who thinks, like, okay, they, this, the, you know, merry-go-round of, like, like it, the, 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 the chairs are going to stop and they're going to pull – I'm not going to get – and they'll overpay or they'll wait and wait and wait and then they'll underpay. I don't think that it'll be accurately priced no matter what. I just don't think running backs can be accurately priced in this current market. I just don't. That's crazy. <laughs> it's just bananas. I know we're going to have to let you go eventually, but before we do, I also want to talk <laughs> about how numbers can be used to evaluate talent. Mm -hmm. We're in a situation where we're watching all of these guys. They're running, they're jumping, they're doing all of the things, and there's just this influx of information and numbers. How can analytics, I mm -hmm. guess, help to process all of that information and establish that a guy is really good at his job or really good for you? in his job well i mean you're measuring everyone with the same stick here like their their film is already done like there's no chance for them to put another college game out there so film is done and so everything here is basically like all right like i think this guy's going to be really fast and maybe he runs a fast 40 or maybe he doesn't it's kind of like making sure that what you ha what you've seen and observed from the film and like your analysis there it's like a gut check of like hey you know what i saw in the film seems pretty to to align with the expectations reached at the combine or not mm -hmm. right like if something's if someone's blazing fast and no one expected it that will cause people to go back and be like hey maybe we missed something in his film mm -hmm. or if someone's maybe not so fast then They'll go back and be like, hey, did but because it is what it is. And a lot of this is like in the same way, like, I don't know about you, maybe you're young, too young for this, but like, you know, I had to oh like, God love you. Take the ACT, <laughs> you know, to get into college. I don't think kids need that anymore. Anyways, no, ACT, a whole different thing. I don't even know. <laughs> but all I know is I had to do it. But it's like, did you write the letter? Yes. Did you take the, uh, yes. Like, it's kind of mm -hmm. like, can you, and here at the combine, it's like, can you interview at these grueling hours, be poked and prodded and, and still like, can you do, can you do this process? Did you train well enough? Did you do all the things you could do to prepare? And then like, can you be a pro in this really very unique circumstance of like being treated like cattle? And then, <laughs> and then after that, so it's, it's kind of like the holistic 
thing of like, let's get everyone in the same area so we can, you know, medical is obviously the most important thing that comes out of here and the interviews, but it's, it's a grueling, it's a grueling test of like patience. So like, can you complete this part of the application? It's become a little bit more of a, do you have the mentality to make it through the process right. as opposed to, are you going to measure correctly? Because... As we all know, if I have to hear about one more hand size measurement, I'll we'll lose my mind. <laughs> and it never comes up again. We all sit around here for oh, his hands are five so tiny. days and we talk about the size of somebody's hands mm -hmm. and then never again do we mention it. Never again. I it mean, never comes up. Like, oh, it does it, when it's a cold weather game yeah, and someone has or, too, yeah, too small Yeah, he's going to drop hands. the ball. Or maybe I mean, if you're Kenny Pickens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or Russell Wilson, like... I don't care about his hands anymore. He's done too many other things now. Mm -hmm. He has the same hands as far as I know. But also like, you know. <laughs> as far as I know. You know, maybe he got a hand transplant. <laughs> yeah. But also like there's ways to um, like the flexibility I'm doing on the table. No one listening can hear it. Like the, the flexibility in your hand. Like my hand measures pretty big and I have tiny hands because I have flexible hands. Never. W I've never thought about like push it against push it against the table. Uh -huh. Spread the. The oh yeah! So Look the, at me go. Like the flexibility in your hands, and a lot of like think about it. Think about it. If you've thrown footballs for 15 years, and your your hands get there. You have a lot more muscle in your hand, and like maybe your same size hand, but just not as flexible. So it like er, like. <laughs> it's wild. Small hands smell it, like cabbage. It's <laughs> it was crazy. It's a wild thing that you do, but there are benefits to this information. No, if for no other reason, it helps to sort through all of yes. the things that you were trying to yes. put together. And that's the ultimate goal, right? Is the sorting and the I think you're just trying to prevent ordering. being wrong. Yeah. You know, like it's like how do I minim like I care about these eleven attributes of a player. Like I want my quarterbacks to be blah 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 right. I'm gonna find I if I if this guy fails three that I think are the most Im important three, he's not my quarterback. He's not like and then you got to do it relative to where you think the value is. Like the measuring stick for guys who we believe to be fifth round picks and guys we believe to be first round picks are so completely different. So I think a lot of it's just like, is my organization of this like matching? Is the math mathing? Like, yeah. you know, is the film filming? Like, are we getting the things that we thought or is it totally different? You just described what J.J. McCarthy's going to go through this week. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Because. Uh -huh. He uh -huh. wasn't asked to do that in a lot of those games. Nope. But the spots where he was, he made throws. So now he's got a chance to r go up the ladder right. and, and probably be fourth quarterback take. Full disclosure, I'm from Michigan. Yeah. So I, I know more people in both the Michigan and Michigan State. Like I over-index in knowing coaching staff people there on, on those two. And also Ohio State, which is really random because Michigan people use – anyways. <laughs> but <laughs> You don't associate with it. Right. It's like I, I just asked a simple question. like, well, why didn't you – have JJ do more of like the pro stuff where they go, we didn't need to. Which is a valid <laughs> point though. Like, like our, I'm paid to win football games, not to get JJ McCarthy drafted in the highest spot possible. And Obviously, with the defense that they had and the running backs and the receivers and everything. Yeah. yeah. So they did it. Right. Like, There's 18 of them I here this week. I am paid to win college football games. Yeah. The, the wildest thing, go watch, if you guys, if you're real draft heads, is that a thing? Sure. If you're a real big draft fan, go watch Texas's defense play. They play a 3-3-5. What? Please, now, try to translate that to the NFL. I have spent time this week with so many NFL defensive coordinators, and I'm like, how do you even, like, what, what do you even think? And they're like, you kind of don't. <laughs> like, you just look at the app. Like, yeah. And that's, like, it's not a very, like, fulfilling answer, but it's the truth, right? Like, Three three five, really? That's not a thing. Like, I mean, gosh. it's a thing, but it's not it's a, a thing now. Not but, an NFL thing. But you know why? Texas is trying to win games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who knew? And it works. <laughs> right. So, I just you have to remember, like, a resume is what it is. It's what you've done. It doesn't mean what you can do or what you can't do. It's just what have you done? And tech and and technically, and it does the math does bear it out. Many times, the things that you have more repetitions with doing, you. You, you, are, you are fully formed in that. You either can or can't do it if you've done taken enough reps at it, right? You get better at certain things or you don't, right? Like, like, but if you've never done it, we don't know. Cynthia Freeland breaking down things that I can never understand. <laughs> Once understand a year that. we get together Aww. and she gets me right. And I appreciate no, that. No, I'm so, I, <laughs> I'm just like very happy for your family. Like I can't get over <laughs> the cutest picture. Maybe oh. it's a bite. Maybe it's a kiss. I'm going to go with kiss. <laughs> you cutest should. baby ever. Nobody Love else it. does. It's always a bite. <laughs> Thank you so much for you taking got it. the yeah, time. Yeah, have a great one. Thanks for having me. 
SeatGeek is now the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or to any other live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek, the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans, so Titans fans can fan. Ian Rappaport from NFL Network joins us here on the OTP. Ian, we're starting the free agency period. It's right around the corner, and I feel like there are a lot of storylines to watch this year. What are some of the top things that you are going to be watching unfold as free agency begins? You know, it's interesting because there's, there's never – we love free agency, and I love free agency, and we spend a lot of time on it, but there's never a great free agency class, right? Because usually the best players get re-signed by their teams. What's interesting as we do this more and more, and especially as the cap has jumped, is we get trades. And, you know, you see, like, Legereus Sneed, you know, likely get tagged by the Chiefs, could get traded. You have, you know, T. Higgins got the tag. Could he get traded? Um, there's a bunch of good players who could get traded. I think that's always fun. Um, where the quarterbacks land. I mean, I don't think that's of relevance to you guys, thankfully, because Will, Le Will Levis, I believe, played well enough last year where the Titans are like, I think we are good, which is a great place to be. Like, you know, they're, te they're drafting seven, and they don't have to worry about the quarterbacks. That's really, 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 really significant. Um, I think, but I think, the other, anyway, to answer your question, I think the other thing is there's going to be a lot of money spent, and the cap jumped to a place where most people did not anticipate it. Um and that's great because everyone's going to get even richer than previously realized. Um, but that's good. These guys should get paid. The Tennessee Titans are sitting in a place where, as you said, it seems they have their quarterback for at least right now. Yeah. They have a lot of cap space, and they've got a high draft pick. Is there a team in the National Football League that's as set up as the Tennessee Titans are going into this offseason? No, I really like where they are. And, you know, last year was, was weird for the Titans because, like, it wasn't successful. Like, they didn't win a lot of games. And, obviously, it ended up with the firing of Mike, of Mike Vrabel. But you have to have those seasons. You, it just sucks, but you have to. You have to go through it. And I, I look at, like, there's no team hotter right now than the Houston Texans. They went through it for a couple of years. It was tough, man. It was really tough. And I think for Tennessee, you have a fresh outlook, a much, um, how should I say this, more optimistic and sunny building a little bit. Some good human, not that Mike Vrabel's not a good human, but some good humans in there. Some really good teachers care about people. It is a really, really good time to be a member of the Tennessee Titans. I think they're in an ideal spot to build. And again, the fact that they don't need a quarterback means they can take all that money. And I'm not saying go sign the splashiest guy because I don't know that it'll be like that. But go sign a really, really good upper middle class and like build the right way. You say the Titans have a lot of good humans right now. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, there's I know a lot of general managers, and I've gotten to know a lot of them and have relationships with them. There's not that many that know the names of my children. Rand Carthon does. He made it a priority to get to know. I met me, my you know, my kids matter to me, but not to other people. Um, but that's kind of what he's like and what he cares about, right? Um, I think Brian Callahan is is similar. Like he's a good guy, and there was such a theme this year in the coaching carousel of owners wanting to hire good teachers, good leaders, and people who they like to be around. And so, like, you know, Brian Callahan is a very good coach, and I think you could not argue with the job he's done helping quarterbacks be successful and teaching. But the first thing anyone says is, oh, he's a good guy. And I think that's really significant because, look, football's hard. It really is. And to to win is painful because you have to go through it and get there. And if you can be with people you like, it's much more, it's just much better. Um, and I think a lot of owners, including Tennessee, decided that this year. How do you think the new coaching staff mixed with a still relatively new general manager is going to impact the decisions that the Titans make in free agency and beyond even into the draft. Yeah, I think, you know, the job of, of Rand Carthon and Anthony Robinson and Chad Brinker is figure out what the coaches like. And I think the really good organizations have synergy. And you don't have arguments over players because you wouldn't fight for a player that's not going to fit what these coaches do. And just reality of it is like Tennessee has had those. I mean, anyone who's seen Mike Vrabel's reaction to the Traylon Burks draft pick or the AJ Brown trade, like you know what's going on there. And Titans had a lot of success. Vrabel's coach of the year. He is awesome. But there were not it was not always synergy. There were not always alignment. 
I expect it to be alignment this time. I expect the personnel department and the coaches to be on the same page as far as what they're looking for. Um, and I think it'll really help significantly. When it comes to the draft and um, kind of turning your mind to that, how big of an impact do you think free agency is going to have on the Titans draft? You know, what you hope for is that you don't need anything. Like, let's say the Titans are going to go into this saying we need a left tackle. Okay, well, now, I mean, I don't know if you get one in free agency. Those are very hard to come by. But theoretically, you get to a point in the draft where you say, I don't care what position is available. I can just take whatever I want. I can take the best player. And at seven, like, we could get three quarterbacks, probably three quarterbacks before. Could get four, maybe, if somebody trades up. Like, they're going to get the fourth or fifth best player in the draft or third or fourth best player in the draft regardless of position. That's awesome. Now, is that a tackle? Like, okay, that'd be great. But it doesn't it shouldn't matter. You should set yourselves up in free agency where you can take whatever position you want and be fine. Ian Rappaport, there you go. Thank you guys. Just breaking it down. Thank you. For Ian Rappaport and Cynthia Freeland, I'm Amy Wells thanking you for listening to the OTP. Welcome to the big show where the legends go.